Now that you've made it inside the Vault of Glass, it's time for the first boss, the Templar. The Templar is a five-phase fight and is easily the longest encounter in the Vault of Glass. This encounter is not like any strike or fight that you've ever been in, so get ready. Before we start, I have a few things to discuss. First, each phase starts a new checkpoint. For example, if you wipe during phase 3, you'll start at the beginning of phase 3 when you start again. This applies through either wiping or leaving and coming back to the Vault of Glass. An ideal team composition is pretty much any setup. I would say that Striker Titans and Blade Dancer Hunters are less than ideal due to a higher risk of death, but experienced players who know the fight very well can use these subclasses with minimal issue. You can always change your subclass during the fight to fit the needs of the team anyway. For inexperienced players, I would not recommend them due to a certain mechanic in the fight that does not encourage the use of melee attacks or close range weapons. For this fight and for the entire Vault of Glass, you will want to prioritize void damage over other sources of damage if you have weapons with equal attack values. Minotaurs will be spawning during the fight, but they are the only things that have shields. If you have a strong special weapon, you are fine to roll with a non-void heavy weapon should you not have a legendary or exotic void heavy weapon. Phase 1 of the fight starts when you jump down into the boss area. You'll see a conflux hanging out in the back of the area where you jump down. In Phase 1, you'll need to defend this conflux and prevent Vex from getting close to it and sacrificing themselves. If 4 Vex make it to a conflux, your raid group will die. It is an immediate wipe. Goblins? Hobgoblins, Minotaurs, and Fanatics will spawn out of many portals in the front of the area. The boss will also be sitting up in the front of the area. He will attack occasionally, but not too often. You should still be careful though, because it will absolutely kill you if you're not paying attention. Fanatics are the main thing you should be worrying about in this phase. They usually don't spawn too frequently until you see the message, The Templar Summons Its Lesions. When you kill a Fanatic, they will drop a green field on the ground. If you touch this green field, you'll get a debuff called Mark of Negation. Periodically, the boss will cast Ritual of Negation. If you are not marked, this does absolutely nothing. If you are marked when the ritual is cast, you will die immediately. The only way to rid yourself of the mark is to cleanse yourself in the middle where the main staircase goes down. To cleanse, just jump into the light. Be warned that you can only cleanse yourself so many times per fight, so try not to get marked too often or ever if possible. It is completely possible to do this entire fight without ever being marked once. For this phase, you should have your group split up into three groups, left, middle, and right. The left group will be watching the left far door and the left area in general. The right side will be pushed up a little bit more towards the right side spawn doors. One person is usually enough to cover the middle, but if you need two, that's fine. A player with an upgraded legendary or exotic hand cannon can kill goblins, hobgoblins, and fanatics in one shot with a shot to the weak spot, making them very efficient at keeping the middle covered. The final player can either help the middle or wherever help is needed. One thing to worry about is that the Vex can teleport very long distances and sometimes spawn near the conflux, so it's possible for them to blink straight to the conflux and sacrifice themselves. Keep an eye on your radar. When the Templar summons its lesions, this is when the Fanatics show up in great numbers along with Axis Harpies. Fanatics spawn in the middle and people should focus their attention on the middle using rockets and ranged supers like Nova Bomb. Do your best to keep them contained because if one gets close to you, it'll explode and you'll likely get marked. The Harpies spawn from the other doors and should be focused whenever possible. When the Templar summons in this fashion, it means the start of the next phase is coming. As soon as the Harpies and Fanatics are all dead, you will start Phase 2. Phase 2 is nearly the same as Phase 1, except now you'll have two Confluxes, one on both the left and the right side instead of the far back. Other than that, there are no differences from Phase 1. You will transition to Phase 3 in the same manner as you transitioned to Phase 2, with all the Fanatics spawning. Phase 3 is the exact same as Phase 1 and 2, except now you have all three Confluxes active at the same time. Your group formation does not need to change for Phase 1, 2, or 3, it should stay the exact same throughout all the phases. Phase 4 changes things up. The goal of Phase 4 is to kill the oracles that spawn in the area. 
Oracles are these yellow glowing cubes that hover above the ground. They do not deal damage to you, they cannot attack, and they do not move. When first starting Phase 4, the Oracles will ping their locations and the sound that they make when they spawn. Each Oracle has its own note, so if you have a good ear, you'll be able to tell which Oracle spawned where based on the sound that it made. There are seven different areas that the Oracles can spawn in. Callouts frequently used in my group include Middle, Left Stairs, Low Left, Left Hidden, Low Right, Far Right, and Right Hidden. The Hidden Oracles are the ones behind the bigger pillars that are closer to the boss and will most likely be the ones that cause you problems. Those are the oracles popping up. The sound that they make is where they spawn. So one's right here. And then the other hidden one's up there. Oh. Should an oracle not be destroyed quick enough, your entire raid group will be marked for negation and you should all run immediately to the middle area to cleanse yourself as the boss will continue to use ritual of negation during the fight. This is the longest phase of the Templar fight. You'll end up with seven waves of oracles. The first wave will come immediately after the oracles ping their initial locations. Each wave spawns 50 seconds after the previous up until the fifth wave. The sixth and seventh waves will come about a minute after instead of 50 seconds. The first and second wave will have three oracles spawn, the third and fourth waves spawn five, the fifth and sixth waves spawn seven, and the seventh wave spawns nine. You should have a similar setup as you did for phases one, two, and three. Have one person on the left and right be the designated hidden oracle killer. If no one sees an oracle that spawns, they should be checking those two hidden spots immediately. You'll have the usual goblins and minotaurs spawning throughout the encounter, but now the hobgoblins will be spawning on different platforms on the outside parts of the area. These need to take priority over everything except oracles because they will absolutely cause deaths if not dealt with quickly. Everyone should be on the lookout for the hobgoblins and killing them as soon as possible. Use the callouts left 1, 2, 3, and right 1, 2, 3, 4 to communicate where they're spawning. Left 1 would be the platform farthest from the boss and 2, 3, 4 are the platforms that get closer to the boss. The boss will prepare Ritual of Negation 20 seconds after the first and second wave of oracles. For wave 3 and 4, it'll be cast after 25 seconds, 5 and 6 is 30 seconds, and 7 is 35 seconds. This means if your group gets marked, you have very limited time to cleanse yourselves. Something also to keep in mind. If your group gets marked, that wave of oracles does not count and you'll have to repeat it, so you don't really want to miss any oracles ever. You'll know when you're on the last wave when you have to kill 9 oracles. Your priorities should be Oracles first, Hobgoblins second, Minotaurs third, and Goblins last. Obviously cleansing yourself of the mark is of the utmost priority. After you kill the final wave of oracles, it's time to finally fight the Templar. You'll have some time to collect some ammo and whatnot because the Templar fight does not start until you pick up the relic. There are two roles in this fight. Either you have the relic, or you don't. Throughout the fight, harpies will be spawning from many spawn portals. They are not particularly strong by themselves, but in large numbers, they will quickly take people down. Meanwhile, the Templar is immune to all damage while his shield is up. There is only one way to bring down his shield, and that is through the relic's super ability, which is an arc blast. On top of that, you will periodically get oracles during the entire fight that must be taken down. If you are the Relic Holder, you are the key person in this fight. The Relic Holder must bring down the Templar's shields as much as possible to let the rest of the team deal damage to him. The Relic Holder also has the ability to quickly take down the Harpies with the Relic's attacks. R1 is a dash attack, R2 is a slower, more powerful attack, jumping and hitting R2 in the air does a death from above style shield slam attack, and L1 is your shield and cleanse ability. Should your group ever be marked for negation because you missed an oracle, your group needs to group up on the relic holder, and the relic holder needs to cleanse the group with the L1 shield. Make sure to hold it down for a second because if you just press and release quickly, the barrier won't be up long enough and you will not be cleansed. 
The Relic Holder should be doing their best to take down Harpies, and the team should let the Relic Holder kill any weak Harpies if possible, because kills charge the Super Meter faster. The Super Meter will charge quickly over time, but the boss enrages after about 7-8 to eight minutes, so you need as many shots on boss as possible. This isn't to say that you should just ignore low health Harpies if they're killing you if you don't have the Relic. If you do not have the Relic, you should just be killing Harpies and staying alive. The Relic Holder should be careful about attacking Harpies on the edge of the platforms, you don't want to fall off. Should the Relic Holder ever die, someone needs to pick up the Relic within 5 seconds. If you don't, your entire team will die and you'll have to start the fight again. When it's finally time to blast the Templar with the Relic Super ability, everyone should find a safe spot, have vision of the boss, and not move. The reason you shouldn't move is because when the blast hits the Templar, two to three people in your group will become detained. Those who are detained will have a shield put around them that dramatically reduces their movement speed and you won't be able to damage anything except for the shield itself. To get rid of the shield, just shoot it away. Your teammates can help shoot off the detainment shields as well. This is also why no one should be using grenades or rockets until the shield is completely off. If you launch a rocket while detained, you will blow yourself up. If you throw a grenade, you will damage yourself heavily. Just do not use them. The reason you shouldn't be moving is because if you are jumping in the air when the detained shield comes up, you will not be affected by the movement speed reduction. Sounds good in theory, until you learn that if you leave your detainment shield before breaking it, you'll be affected by suppression field. Suppression field will kill you very quickly if you do not re-enter your detainment shield, but it typically results in death. This is mostly a problem for the relic holder, since the dash attack will still move you at full speed. It is very easy to dash out of your own shield and die. To prevent this, just go back and forth until the shield is removed. It should only take a couple of hits to break it. Or you can quickly tap jump and then shield slam the ground and it should break off in one hit. The Relic Holder will break the Templar's shield and damage needs to happen after that, because you only get a few seconds to damage the Templar. The final thing you need to worry about is his teleport. After his shield is broken, the boss will attempt to teleport. When his shield is about to come back, that's when he'll teleport. The location the Templar will be going to is marked by a circle with a vertical beam of light coming out of the middle of the circle. It is possible to stop the teleport by standing inside of the circle, but it will spawn additional enemies and is generally not worth stopping. It's much easier just to call out his teleport location instead of trying to stop it. He can teleport to a few places, just make sure to call out where he is teleporting so your teammates can move away. Callouts are back left, back right, middle, top left, and top right. To recap, the Relic Holder uses the super ability to remove the boss shield, everyone should kill oracles and harpies, break out of your detainment shields, damage the boss, boss teleports, repeat until the boss is dead. Loot drops from the Templar can include Ascendant Energy or Shards, the Shotgun Found Verdict, which is an arc damage shotgun with the power to go full auto and deal bonus damage to oracles, and a variety of raid armor. Exotics do drop randomly in the Vault of Glass, so it would not surprise me if you saw one drop from the Templar. Loot is given out after Phase 4, the Oracle Phase, and after you kill the Templar. Note that you are not guaranteed any loot except for Ascendant Materials, which you should receive every time. Like I said, this is the longest encounter in the Vault of Glass. Should you wipe, you'll just start at the beginning of a phase, you do not have to do the entire thing over. The Templar is just a test of your group's ability to communicate. After the Templar, you'll move to the Gorgon's Labyrinth, the Jumping Puzzle, and then the real test, Atheon Times Conflux. Thanks for watching, and good luck. Get him over there. <laughs> right when he says, okay guys, I'm back. Just push him off. <laughs> right as, right as it happens. <laughs> Just trap him, and, oh. trap him in like a square. Oh my god, that was a good push. Oh! <laughs> oh god. I, that's why I ran to the court because I knew you foolish to try that. <laughs>